Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining in. I am starting a new study, which I'm calling Psalm Sense, and I'm taking it from the book of Psalms. And today is the first one from Psalm chapter one. I love verse three, the last phrase of that verse, which says, whatever he does shall prosper. So as we look at Psalm one, we shall see where the blessing comes from. Here's Psalm chapter one, verses one through three. And let me read it. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Now I love uh, this psalm. There are several things that we want to point out. First of all, it's talking about the blessed man. This is going to be in contrast with the ungodly man in the verses that follow. But right now the focus is on the blessed man. And the psalm is an exhortation to the people of God to consider the things that are said here in order to make the decisions in life that will end in prosperity. And of course we see the, the word prosperity down here. So there is there, there is two things here. First of all, the blessed man does not do these things, but the blessed man does these things. So basically, you have a blessed man who is one that does not, and we see three words here that kind of uh, run in parallel. These, these, uh, these three phrases here run in parallel, but uh, you see this uh, walk stands and sits and this is kind of a progression because you have uh, the encouragement here is not to get entangled with uh, the ungodly and sinners and and the scornful and these are kind of all synonymous of talking about an unrighteous person or an ungodly person somebody who does not believe in God or at least someone who is not walking in the ways of the Lord so we have a progression here and this is uh, is seen in that well first you're kind of walking by and then if you allow it to continue the, the thought process or the sinful process, you're walking by, but then you stop and you stand and you're kind of like not removing yourself from it. And then uh, the last part of the progression is, well, you sit yourself down right in the midst of it and, and this kind of uh, engulfs you. So this is a, a, a way of expressing the progression of sin. And, and so oftentimes, you know, we have... Uh, uh, people, it's, it's like if you have a conscience which which stops you right here, then uh, you know you're you're okay. But uh, you are tempted by what's over here, and you're seeing it, and you're looking at it, and you don't go headlong all the way out to this point. Well, you you just kind of move the boundaries of the conscience a little bit, and uh, then you move it a little bit more, and then you you find yourself there, and then you get yourself in over your head and. And before you know it, you're in a place where it is a habit or it is a part of your life and, and you've just been immersed in it and you're engulfed by it. And, and so often addictive things and other kinds of sins become habits in this way. It's just this slow progression because first we've walked by and we've listened to what is being said by the ungodly. And then we stop and we're, we're just kind of in the midst of it rather than removing ourselves from it. And then finally, we just kind of plop ourselves down and there we are in the minute in the middle of it. The blessed man does not do this. The blessed man doesn't consider what the ungodly says, does not stand in the sinner, in this path of the sinners, does not sit in the scene, sit in the seat of the scornful, but moves on from that. Instead, what he does do, and this is this is the great comparison here. His delight, his delight. Now notice you have uh, on the on the one on the one hand, all of this is speaking about um, the words, the words, or the guidance, the words, the guidance of ungodly people. And uh, just to just to say that the Christian has to really make sure not to listen to counsel or, or advice indiscriminately that comes from unsaved people. They have a worldview that does not include God. And so they can only provide so much wisdom in this world. And I'm not saying that they are devoid of wisdom. They can provide some wisdom which is stand, which stands in uh, in conjunction with the grace of God that is available to all men. But at some point, 
the wisdom and the, the counsel that they provide and the activities that they engage in are going to be ungodly. They are not going to consider God in them. And so it becomes very important for the Christian to gain counsel and to listen to advice and to to follow after those who are are godly, those who have a godly worldview, those who know the word of God and can encourage along the truth, along the lines of the truth rather than along the lines of the opinions of people. And so the contrast then is rather than listening to the words of the ungodly, we're listening to the words of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And so there is a uh, a, a really interesting contrast. It's not just uh, listening, but it's delighting or taking pleasure in it. And uh, I have to say the Psalm 1 has always resonated with me from the time I was a new Christian. Uh, for some reason, the Lord just instilled within my heart a love and desire for the Word of God. And so whenever I come across verses like this, they just it just uh, uh, just connects with me. And so I'm just so thankful uh, for the encouragement here. And, and this is what we ought to do. We, we ought to not just listen to the word of God, but delight in it, which means we want to go to it. And so it says, if you delight in it, then you are going to meditate, meditate in it day and night. And, and this, this word meditate is really an interesting word. It means like to growl or to mutter. It's, it's like the uh, you know, rather than a bark or, or, or a meow, which is just a, a one time, you know, bursting forth a sound. This is the, the growl, is, which is ongoing and, and the sound just continues to flow out of the mouth. And to mutter is just to kind of keep talking to yourself under your breath. And, you know, you go on and on and on and on and on, on it goes. And so this is what it means to meditate day and night. It's like you're, you're muttering or, or growling or thinking, meditating, uh, having the word of God in your mind and on your mouth and, and in your throat and in, coming out of your lungs is just there all of the time. And so this is where the godly person is, delighting in the word of God and meditating or muttering it or, or growling it day and night. So the blessing comes then in the next part, this is, and this is amazing, he shall be, he shall be. The person, the, the man who delights in the law of the Lord is going to be like, is going to be like this, a tree planted by the rivers of water. So this is a picture. This is an image here. You want to know what a godly man is going to be like? Well, he's going to be like that tree over there that's flourishing, that's by the river, has plenty of water. He, it's full of fruit. Here it says brings forth its fruit in its season. It is full of fruit. The leaf also does not wither. That means it's not a dry tree. It is not an unproductive tree. The godly man who delights in the law of the Lord and stays away from the counsel of the ungodly, he's going to be like that tree. And then, of course, here's that, that great promise. And, and that's what it is. Uh, this is a promise that God gives to us. If, and we can kind of just single this out, if you delight in the law of the Lord and if you stay away from what the, the unbelievers are doing, you will prosper in everything that you do. Now, we have to have to take a moment. What does this mean to prosper? Well, this doesn't necessarily mean that, well, I'm going to uh, rake in the bucks or, uh, you know, uh, be wealthy and rich with respect to the material possessions of the world necessarily. But it does mean on the most basic level that in my life, there is going to be a certain blessing that follows me around because I am living in accordance with the word of, of, of God. So what we have in um, Deuteronomy, for example, God promises to bless his people he, if they follow his commandments. So he says in Deuteronomy 29, if you keep my commandment and you do what I tell you to do, then you're going to be blessed in the field and blessed in the womb and blessed in the house and blessed in this and blessed in that. And and everything in your life is going to be blessed. Whereas if you break this covenant, he says, you're going to be cursed in the field and cursed in the womb and cursed in the home and cursed in all of these things. Uh, it is not going to go well with you. And so just to kind of bring it into modern day um, context, if, for example, 
uh, you follow God's design for marriage. And uh, one guy and one woman, they, they get married and they stay together. If they continue in that, as the Bible encourages us and tells us to do, then there's going to be a certain blessing that they are going to experience. Is it going to be easy in their marriage? Well, no, not necessarily. Is it going to be easy with their kids? Well, no, not necessarily. But in a godly home, you have love and you don't have to deal with the the pain and the the emotional trauma that comes from separation and divorce and and all of those things. And the same thing with the raising of the children. If you do it according to God's ways, then there's going to be a measure of blessing, even though it's going to be difficult and not perfect in so many ways. But it is so much uh, better and so far removed from what the people of the world who do not follow the precepts of God what they experience it is so different and so that that's the kind of blessing you do if you do it the way god wants you to do it you're going to experience blessing in your life it's going to go well for you and if you don't well you're going to be like the ungodly and the sinners and the scornful so whatever you do will prosper now even more than that especially for us as new testament believers there, there's the spiritual component that comes into the picture here if we delight ourselves in the law of the Lord, then there is going to be a certain strength and maturity that is going to come to us in a spiritual sense. And so we're going to prosper that way too. Our faith will grow. Our joy will grow. Our peace will grow. All the things that we need in life uh, from a spiritual perspective will be given to us. There will be opportunities for service and joy that comes from seeing people blessed and glorifying God and and all of those things. And then, of course, there is the hope of eternal life, which we have as uh, as believers in Christ. And so that'll carry us through this day until we go to be with him forever. So we shall prosper spiritually uh, as well and even probably more importantly than anything else that might happen in this world. So those are uh, those are the verses one through three. Now let's go to the next part. This is uh, talking about the ungodly. So we make a transition here. Uh, we transition from the blessed to the ungodly. Now, the ungodly are not, they are not like, they are not like the, the blessed man. So the blessed man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whereas the ungodly is like the chaff which the wind drives away. And, and so what a distinction here. Uh, the godly man has a certain permanence or a certain stability about him, whereas the ungodly man is just blown by the wind and taken away with no permanence, no fruit, no no prosperity, nothing, just gone, blown away. And so, so we have this uh, further uh, description here. The ungodly shall not stand, shall not stand in judgment. So there's coming a day, and we all know this, when God will judge the works of men. And so sinners will be judged. And in that day of judgment, the ungodly will not stand. They have no hope of escape from the judgment of God. Whereas the righteous, on the other hand, as, uh, they're not like the ungodly. We have been forgiven. Sorry, we have been forgiven in Jesus Christ. And so when the judgment comes, then there is a certain uh, blessing that we will experience in that we will not be carried away with the judgment of God. We will be received into his presence and we will be blessed because of our relationship to Jesus Christ. And then says the ungodly or sinners here, it's, going to, it's using the word sinners, they shall not stand, they shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. Um, this is another blessing that we as the people of God experience. And this is the ability or the calling to come together and to assemble in the name of God in order to worship him and to fellowship with one another. We have that as believers, but the ungodly don't have that. And so this is a blessing of the righteous. And then there's one final contrast in the last verse, verse six here. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. And so there's a certain knowledge and a certain intimacy there that we experience because we have a relationship with the Lord, but the ungodly, they shall instead die. So life is found in the Lord and in knowing him, but death is found for those who do not know him. And so there are, so having looked at all the verses now, there are some things that we can look at as to the prosperity blessings. What are the prosperity blessings that we experience as 
believers. So from this psalm, we see several things. First of all, we are fixed and secure. We are like that tree, planted, planted, fixed, firm, unmovable there by the rivers of water. So the believer has a certain stability about him. There's a certain prosperity that comes in being fixed and sure and secure rather than being blown around. So we have that if we delight ourselves in the law of the Lord. Second, we'll be nourished. So here's this tree that's planted by the rivers of water, which provides for it the nourishment that it needs in order to grow and to thrive. And so we too, as believers, delighting in the law of the Lord, we will be nourished. We'll be nourished spiritually. We will be blessed physically. And so this this will really add to our lives and, and uh, really be a blessing uh, we can turn to God and give praise to him for all of the blessings that he gives to us. Number three will be fruitful. Uh, this is a big deal. If you look in uh, the New Testament, uh, the fact that we ought to produce fruit. Uh, Galatians chapter 5 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And all through the New Testament, really, it talks about how our fruit, uh, there, there ought to be fruit in the life of the believer. And so as believers delighting in the word of the Lord, we will be fruitful in our lives, producing those things that are pleasing to God. Number four, we will escape judgment. So we saw that here in verse five, the ungodly won't stand in the judgment, but of course the, the godly will. We will stand. We don't have to fear the judgment. And then number five, there's a place in God's assembly. Let me just uh, put a plug in here how important church is. It is part of the blessing of the the people of God, the ability to come together and to worship in his name. That is what God has called us to, and it is a blessing for us, as opposed to the ungodly who are out there and they're by themselves and they, they don't have this additional uh, thing called the family of God, the church in their lives. So these are the blessings, the prosperity that the righteous godly will experience. So uh, let me end with these two exhortations here, or these uh, two practical things. First of all, don't be like unbelievers. Don't be like the unbelievers. Don't take your counsel from them. Don't uh, take your advice from them. Don't admire them or envy them. Don't want their sinfulness or their pleasures. Don't, don't look to that and desire it. Stay away from all of that. There is a better place to fix your attentions, and that is, and here's the second exhortation, the word of God. Delight yourself in God's word. Delight yourself in God's word. Spend time in God's word. Study it. Read it. Practice it. Put it. Put it. Uh, put it in your life. Make it a part of your everyday life. And if you do these two things, you will be blessed in your life. Let me pray as we close. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Help us to love it and to delight in it. Help us to take our counsel from it. Help us to put it into practice in our lives. And Lord, may we experience all the prosperity and the blessing that you give to those who follow after you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.